Mobile Task Force Kappa 42. Angel reporting in. Good lord, it's been a long time since I posted up a briefing. Oh well. I'd offer up an explanation, but I don't really feel like it. Long story short, let's just say after about two weeks of operating in downtime, I'm now 20% less cyborg. Also, 100% more ready to fill you in on tonight's project. I might have kind of missed you guys or something. Anyway, item SCP-1076, the only child. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. Each specimen of SCP-1076 is to be held in a 1.5 meter by 2 meter by 2.5 meter unfurnished cell with a windowless door. Bedding and plumbing facilities are not required. Soundproofing is not strictly required, but should be provided if possible, to reduce psychological stress on guards. One armed guard is to be assigned to each cell, chosen from personnel with no children under the age of 21. Access to specimens of SCP-1076 for experimentation requires level 3 clearance and written approval following thorough psychiatric profiling. In no circumstance will access be granted to researchers with children under the age of 21. Due to their territorial behavior, specimens must be kept separate from each other at all times. To guarantee this, it is recommended that no two specimens be held in the same building. Description: SCP-1076 appears to be a child between the ages of 3 and 5 with an unwashed appearance and long matted hair, barefoot, and dressed in ragged clothing. Cursory physical examination reveals signs of moderate to severe malnutrition and bruising and scarring consistent with physical abuse. Specimens of both sexes have been encountered and normally appear to be of the majority ethnicity of their place of discovery. Specimens seem to comprehend simple statements but have not yet displayed any signs of verbal ability. Vocalizations are limited to simple grunts, sighs, and when disturbed, loud shrieking and sobbing. Specimens are reluctant to meet the gaze of any individual and tend to look downward in the absence of outside stimulus. They will respond to simple questions by nodding in the affirmative or negative. Initial encounters with SCP-1076 occurs when a parent discovers the child in a state of apparent distress. These incidents occur in isolation. There are no known cases with any third-party witnesses. Subjects report an overwhelming feeling of pity for the specimen, and in every recorded case, take it into their home. Once established in a home, SCP-1076 begins to monopolize the attention of the parents to the exclusion of their own children. Children in the home begin to show signs of neglect and malnutrition and become depressed, sullen, and withdrawn. Behavioral problems such as truancy and running away become frequent, which may attract the attention of school authorities or social welfare agents. Upon investigating, these authorities become obsessed with the welfare of SCP-1076 and subsequently ignore the children. An infestation typically ends with the death of the parents or other caretakers as they neglect their own well-being in order to attend the SCP-1076, eventually succumbing to starvation or disease. In the few cases where the Foundation was able to contain an infestation before this occurrence, subjects separated from the specimen became violent or nearly catatonic, and repeatedly demanded to be reunited with their baby. If two specimens of SCP-1076 meet, they will attack each other with great force, using teeth, fingernails, and until one or both are dead. Any personnel witnessing such an attack should be treated for possible psychological trauma. Request 1076-1 Dr. Leon O'Connor has requested an access to an SCP-1076 specimen for vivisection. Request has been denied this time, pending completion of a less invasive physiological analysis. Footnotes. Previous procedure called for providing food to specimens, but it has been since determined that SCP-1076 can consume any amount of food without showing any signs of cetacean and can survive indefinitely without any food intake whatsoever. Also, for the purposes of this document, a parent refers to a person with one or more living children below the age of 21. <laughs> I can relate to these kids. I never really played well with others either. Alright, now don't get too touchy-feely. I'll be back to my regular, non-caring, unfeeling, petulant self soon enough. Stay safe, stay alert, and stay away from
away from kids.